Hello everybody, good day to you, and welcome back. This is a 2006 Ford Mustang GT, the 4.6 liter V8. Uh, this vehicle's here for a check engine light. It's got, uh, I think, two trouble codes of significance and then one trouble code of insignificance. Uh, it's running a P0171 system lean bank one, that's this side over here. And it's also got, I think, like a 2196, uh, which is basically saying that the O2 sensor on bank one is stuck lean or is not switching high, low, high, low, high, low. So we have a fuel trim issue. I was uh, attempting to troubleshoot it yesterday a little bit and I kind of got a little stuck. So uh, I, I kind of gave up for that or gave up on the day and uh, now I'm back at it again. Uh, a little bit of backstory. Um, this uh, this vehicle has had a couple repair attempts already to solve the issue. Uh, I don't know if we can see down there. No, not a chance. But it's got a brand new uh, O2 sensor. Not exactly brand new, but somebody replaced the O2 on bank one. Uh, that's the upstream sensor. And uh, they cleared the code, sent it on its way, and that did not seem to fix its problem. And now, I think we can see now. Yeah, there's the, hang on, focus. Focus. There's the shiny on that sensor. It's it's real hard to see. You can see it way down. There it is. There's that O2 sensor. So it's been replaced, um, but uh, that did not fix the problem. I spent quite a bit of time yesterday kind of checking out the PCV system and the vacuum system. I was looking for leaks. I checked for intake leaks down here at the manifold that uh, came up dry. Uh, there's really nothing here that's uh, uh, given me an indicator that we have an actual leak, um, which uh, an air leak, an unmetered air leak, would uh, would cause a lean code or a lean condition because there's too much air coming into the system and the PCM does not know that that air is there, so it can't compensate with fuel, thus uh, running the air-fuel ratio uh, out of stoichiometric harmony. So uh, I attempted to diagnose it. I found fuel trims that were... Uh, I think they were max positive on bank one, and then they were just uh, normal fuel trim levels on bank two, uh, which in the absence of a, uh, a vacuum leak or a, a fuel delivery problem, which I don't think it has, um, I'm starting to wonder if we have an electrical issue when it comes to that sensor, or maybe even we have a an incorrect sensor. Um, the reason that I'm very, very stuck on this is when it came in, I was able to visually identify the fault. I saw that fuel trims were wrong and I saw the O2 sensors uh, or the O2 sensor on bank one. I caught that particular sensor showing me uh, like zero volts on the PID and incorrect voltages. I caught it hanging up and not switching. So I did see the sensor uh, performing erratically. Um, but the problem is, is while I was trying to diagnose it, keys, the uh, the system began functioning as designed and the fuel trims went back into spec, which ultimately halted my diagnosis because if the problem does not exist, I can't find it. Found the keys, I was sitting on them. Starting the engine. So what I'm gonna do today is we're gonna pull up all that data again and, uh, and I wanna see um, if the fault is present at this time or if we're back to where I left off yesterday. So we're gonna go to fuel and O2 sensor data. Continuing, I know it doesn't support all PIDs. They all say that. Oh, hang on. I wanna get into my PID list, not my graph list. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Now we should still be in closed loop. We need to let this thing warm up a little bit, but yeah, we can see here right fuel trims are they're around zero for long term i found this yesterday at like 22 and this would have been like two or three. O2 sensor bank one sensor one we see some voltages going on right here uh, we're not in open loop so the downstream o2s are not doing anything we've got the bank two sensor one that's the driver side bank uh, that one is switching like it's supposed to be so right now we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing fuel trims are uh yeah they're slightly in the negative which is okay as long as we're within plus or minus 10 uh that's kind of acceptable on, on our short terms and long terms for that matter um da -da 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 -da, well long term yeah yeah I, I don't know what i did to fix it if i did anything to fix it but uh, as of right now the uh, situation and the symptom are not uh, 
are not displaying themselves. So let's go back real quick and just take a look at the codes. That way we know what's going on here. We're going into memory. Yes, key's on, it's running, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we've got a P0171, system lean, bank one. Again, that's the passenger side bank of cylinders. That's bank one, this is bank two. The reason that's bank one is that's where cylinder number one is. So you've got one, three, five, and seven, and then over here you've got two, four, six, and eight. Anyway, back to our scan tool, we've got a 171, so it's lean on bank one as per the code, and a 2195 O2 sensor, excessive lean signal bank one, sensor one. So there's something going on with the uh, air fuel monitoring on bank one, I think. The reason I think it has something to do with the monitoring system and not so much the engine is if we had like an air leak that was going to cause, uh, you know, unmetered air to come in, theoretically that should be affecting both banks, not just the one single bank. So I don't think it's an air leak. And let me show you what I mean. The reason I don't think it's an air leak is let's say we get an air leak uh, in that tube right there and that's pulling vacuum. Well, as that air leak is coming into the intake manifold on this side of the throttle body, it's going to mix with whatever cylinder it wants. So it won't be able to just go into one side or the other side or this cylinder or that cylinder. It's going to mix with all of them and that's going to run the entire engine lean rather than just one section. Now there is a possibility that the intake or the lower intake manifold could be leaking and it's drawing in air just on one or two of the runners on this particular side but uh, I wasn't able to confirm that. I actually tested for that by disconnecting the PCB system and plugging it off. And then I was uh, checking for vacuum over here on bank one, which I never found that. So basically if there were or was or is a vacuum leak uh, at the intake manifold gaskets with PCB disconnected, there should be nothing to pull vacuum under the valve, valve covers in the PCB system and uh, that wasn't the case. It was not pulling vacuum with that disconnected, which tells, tells me that there was not a, uh, an intake manifold leak. So I don't believe we actually has a, have a physical component failing. Um, we may have a wiring issue regarding the bank one sensor. We may have a PCM issue, but that's gonna be difficult to track down. We'll have to, if it is a PCM, we'll have to probably employ process of elimination to make that determination. So that's way, way ahead of schedule here. Um, aside from the obvious, I, I don't really see much to go off of. Uh, the only thing I can really come up with, and I talked to some of the council uh, on the live stream with Power Stroke Tech Talk, uh, we are under the opinion, based on all known information, that perhaps the sensor that was installed over here on Bank One is either a low quality aftermarket. Uh, it's not the correct style of sensor, or perhaps it's just a crappy build, or it has an, uh, a failure inside, and uh, it, it, that's causing the situation. It's really hard to kind of pinpoint or point your finger at newly replaced parts, but we also have learned here over time that just because it's new does not mean it's any good. And the fact that we had, or I had witnessed that sensor malfunctioning and then it came back in online and started working like it should have been leads me to believe that the possibility of a faulty sensor is very real so uh, I actually may go ahead and replace where's my data I may go ahead and replace that sensor with a motorcraft unit because like I said I don't know what was what was installed and um, I just want to make sure I can rule out some of these variables because this like I said this car's already been uh, at the shop a few times they've thrown some parts at it and we still have not uh, or they the customer nobody has been able to really pinpoint the issue and make that check engine light stay off so that's the goal here now I can tell someone has been working on this thing rather recently because if we go back into our code menu we saw that P1000 that states that uh, drive cycles are incomplete show you real quick the p1000 obd2 system checks incomplete tells me that uh, memory was recently cleared on this so let's see if we can find a PID that tells us when the last time the codes were reset let's 
go down to the bottom. Let's see here. Here we go. This helps us out. So the malfunction indicator lamp, the mill, that is turned on and it has been on for 88 miles. Now that tells me that this thing was just recently cleared because it has the P1000 code. So someone's been trying to troubleshoot this and I, I think our owners are seeking a second opinion. Um, either way, I'm, I'm looking to, uh, to figure out what's going on here. I, I think it might have a bad sensor, even though it's new. And regardless, I, I may just go ahead and do a triagnostic and toss one in just to rule that out. And if I can't catch this thing in the act, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So let's see here. Yeah, look at that, fuel trims are, that's negative three. It's, everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I caught this earlier and I wish I'd have been recording. I caught that sensor stuck at zero volts. Uh, the other ones were all doing what they were supposed to be doing, but that was intermittently just hitting zero volts and that's not what we wanna see. Uh, let's pull up some graphs real quick. I need to figure out how to get rid of that glare. That's silly. Hang on, let's go over here. Okay, let's pull up some graphs. We're gonna go to four graph and we're gonna go down to our O2 sensors. Okay. So what we've got here, we've got O2 sensor, that's bank one, sensor one, voltage. O2 sensor, bank one, sensor two, that's in the cat or the downstream. This is O2 sensor, bank two, sensor one, that's upstream on the not affected side. And that is the catalyst monitor se uh, sensor uh, in or behind the cat. Uh, I'm not so concerned about the downstreams, but I am looking at our switching pattern between our upstreams. Now, even though fuel trims are in line, look at how lazy the sensor is. It, it, it is switching right now. Uh, like I mentioned before, I did catch this thing hanging up, but it's, it is it is switching, but it's hanging up when it switches. You can see uh, like right right there. We, get, we go from low to high, and it just kind of hangs out there. Then it'll drop and switch. It drops and it just kind of hangs out, and it kind of repeats that pattern. It's, it's a lazy sensor when we should see a pattern that looks like this graph down here, where we're going low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, I'm gonna order a, uh, another sensor for the exhaust on the upstream bank one, and we're gonna toss that one in, and we're gonna monitor the activity on another sensor and see what it does. So let's power this thing down before it gets too hot. I'm gonna go get the thing ordered and we're gonna slap it in and go from there. So stay tuned. Mustang. Mustang Sally. All right, let's go find some, uh, some pots. What do you guys say? Let's get some pots. Parts, 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 parts. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I almost doxed myself and gave you guys my computer password. That's not gonna work. Sarah here, go anywhere. Okie dokie, new sensors on the way. <laughs> Moving on up, black subscribe button. Seriously. No, really, I mean that. That way you get a notification when I make a video. And then you can watch it. It's kind of a big deal. All right, all the way up on the locks. Click. Okay, so what we're gonna do, uh, so there's our downstream O2 sensor. See how it's in the converter? Likewise, on this side, in the converter. Uh, lumens, where's my light? Yeah, there, well, you can see it right here. That's the upstream O2, kinda dark. You can tell it's been replaced, but it's not, uh, not super new. Okay, notes, we're rolling over with the tool cart. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna pluck, uh, pluck that sensor out, which is a little easier said than done. It's up there kind of far. Uh, the exhaust is a little warm. I had it running. Um, let it cool off for a minute and then we're gonna get that sensor out. Uh, I ordered another one. Uh, I'm expecting it any time now, 
Uh, like I said, this is going to be a triagnostic. I'm going to throw in that new one and we're going to go back up to the scan tool and uh, check on uh, what that upstream O2 sensor is doing over there. I just need to eliminate that sensor as the uh, possibility. All right, I want to see if I can manage this without burning my flanges or my wrist. It's a little warm up there. All right, so this connector, very hard to reach, especially while, while things are warm. I'm going to try to reach up and disconnect this thing. My thumb's on the little release tab. Let's give it a bit of a tug here. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Come on, there we go. Ow. So that uh, connector looks okay. The pins look good. You can tell it's been replaced recently. It's fairly newish, whatever's. No, that's not the sensor. We're looking at the one up a little bit higher. So I need to reach in there with some wrench action. See if we can't get that guy to come free. Not the uh, easiest sensor in the world to get a hold of, but I think I can manage. Unclick. Ooh, that's, uh, that's tighter than it needed to be. Uh-oh. Oh, dang. <clears throat> Whoa, that was that thing was in there. They don't need to go that tight. I mean, tight's good, but that was that was really tight. Okay, I can't fit a wrench on this anymore. It was like the the one shot that I had. So, oh man, this isn't fun. It's hot in there. Al, yeah, no. I need to work it out with the wrench a little bit more. I have an idea. Maybe if I just twist this a bunch, the wire will untwist the sensor. It's worth a shot. It's probably not gonna work and it's a stupid idea, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, it's a negative. Not working. Please come loose. This is... You see, the issue is, is I can get a wrench on it, but then there's this bolt for the transmission. And when I try to turn the wrench, the, uh, the wrench just hits that bolt. And uh, I can't get a straight shot on it anymore. Hmm. It's hot. Okay. I have an idea. I will use some gloves to protect my hands from the heat. That might work. If I reach around the back side here, reach in the front, I can just kind of work the fastener with my fingers. It's not rusty, so this, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's working. And I think the twisted wire is helping too. Yep, it's coming out. I, I don't know if you guys can see, and I apologize if you can't. Okay. Wow, this thing's, it's running pretty rich, I think. Look at that. Yeah, take a look at that. That's uh, it's pretty dark. We set it up. Yeah, I'm, I've got another one. Like I said, I'm gonna throw this one in. We've come this far. All righty, I'm coming in with a, a triagnostic sensor. We're gonna install this the same way. Just gonna get it up into its hole here, and use the fingertip turning method. Once the threads are started, I'll, I'll twist that wire up some. That way the wire's natural uh, natural rebound to a straight position is going to maybe help me turn this just a little bit. This is going to be the hard part, getting it to thread. Because I'm holding a couple hundred degree pipe. I hope you guys can see. Come over here.
okay. I think the thread's caught. Here we go. So here what I'll do. Oh no, my, my wire's twisting. We don't want that. Can't see it. Well, I know which direction it's twisting, so let's just untwist it. Tuck that over there. Okay, sensor's going in. That's, that's great, perfect. Tight squeeze. Yeah, you see that little bolt hole right there that is getting us hung up. Like a lot. I know we need, don't need this wrench. I need this wrench. I think it's a little bit thinner and it's a double box end with uh, four different angles. If this one won't do it, uh, nothing will. Or something like that. Hmm. Come on, get on there. Why? All right, yeah, I got a bite, turned a little bit. There we go. Got another bite, not a big one. Click. All right, that sensor has some torque. Let's move back a little bit, plug it in, and then uh, we're gonna go up top restart the engine and uh, we're going to monitor the activity on this sensor. All right, so we can see the connectors up there, but I can't fit my fingers up there to really make this connection happen. So I'm going to get a hold of the harness side with some curvy uh, angle pliers here. They're like needle nose, but with a twist. I'm going to see if I, if I can't get a hold of the connector to hold, to stabilize it. Because I can't fit my hand up there. So what I'll do is use the pliers to hold the other side. And then I can line up this, uh, the connected side. I hope you guys can see. I'll just give it a push. Please click. There it is. That's a positive click action. I'll put you back up where you go. I have no idea what that mounts to, if anything. It's nowhere near its mount, and I don't see anything to, to clip it to. Okay, let's get out of here, let this thing down, restart the engine, and uh, take a look at that scan tool data. Down, down, down. Mustang coming down. I see you. All right, let's go see what this thing's gonna do. Restarting the engine. Begin engine starting sequence now. Oh yeah. All right. Ooh, this car is tiny. I cannot fit. Okay, so. All right, we've got our four graph pulled back up. Let's scroll down and find O2 sensors. So here's fuel trims, long-term. O2 sensor one, sensor two, no worries that it's flatlined. Looky here. Okay, I'm gonna let this thing run, come up to temp, and we're gonna let it switch over into open loop. Okay, we've had a few seconds of run time. Uh, we can see that the sensor that we just installed, that's bank one, sensor one, we can see that that thing is switching 
better and it's not getting hung up the way that the one that we just removed was the old new one but we can also see that it's not exactly emulating the bank two so uh let's go ahead and get this thing off the rack take it for a test drive let it come up to temp and we're going to monitor the uh, fuel trims and both of these o2 sensors uh, at the same time and we're going to see if we have any change of state here i mean from what i'm looking at that's kind of an improvement but it's also not right so i'm not 100 percent yet uh, but like i said this was a triagnostic uh, i get to do that you know, just clearing the rack all the way What do we have here? That's where we walked away. This is where we are now. A little bit of activity. Okay. Let's take quick note of our short-term fuel trims. They're hovering around zero, maybe a little bit positive. And long-term fuel trims. Where's our long terms? Zero and zero, but we're still in closed loop also pulling through the parking lot here and there was some on off throttle action and we saw a little bit of response from both sides and it looks like our switching pattern here is starting to emulate the known good sensor with a little bit more accuracy so I'm I'm not getting hopeful but I'm starting to see signs that that newish whatever sensor that was installed is uh, was simply faulty we're on the accelerator about 30 miles per hour and again, we're looking for those patterns to emulate each other and, and match. Half throttle, idle. It seems uh, fairly responsive. Okay. Okay, we have pulled over, not scanning and recording and talking and driving and we can see that we are we're in closed loop let's go ahead and pull up those sensors we can see here that the bank one and bank two downstream sensors have both become active these are the ones that monitor the efficiency of the converters and still we're, uh, we're seeing a extremely similar pattern between the sensor we just changed and the known good sensor. Uh, even when there's fluctuations like through um, you know, accelerations in D cells, we're still seeing a very, very similar pattern here. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this and we're gonna reset the fuel trims. Um, oh, real quick, let's take note that long terms and short terms are still hovering uh, right around zero. So let me get back into that real quick. Long term fuel trim. Bank one and bank two, those are still hanging out right around zero. And our short terms, we've got a three, six, four, like this is completely acceptable. And we can see that short terms are switching high, low and high, low. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out and we're gonna clear all of the, uh, the engine data and uh, trouble codes and I'll continue uh, the test drive. We'll revisit it when we get back to the shop. Mm, clear codes, continue. Clearing. I broke the rules, engine's running, but codes are cleared. Light is off. Let's just go back into codes menu to verify. So, men memory. Da, da, da. Words. No, 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 I didn't want to abort. What have I done? Okay. So, yeah, that's the P1000. That's just saying drive cycles are not complete yet. That'll go away after uh, X amount of drive cycles when it runs all the monitor tests on all the other systems. Uh, let's check pending codes nothing pending this is good and i'm going to pull data back up we're going to continue our test drive and we will review when we get back to the shop man just because it's new doesn't mean that it's good more steam all right pulling in Went around the block a couple times. Let's uh, let's go revisit uh, all of our data in a moment. All right, guys. Thirty minutes later, let's see what is going on here with all these fuel trims. So again, we're bank one sensor one. That's the one we replaced. That is downstream inconsequential. Downstream inconsequential. I do find it odd that these two are just kind of hanging out, not doing anything again. But the other one that's relevant, 
bank two sensor one and we're seeing very similar patterns of switching and anytime there's an anomaly it's mirrored by the other side which tells me that that's just the engine doing its thing maybe the ac compressor kicking on and off uh thermostat opening who knows what but uh from what i'm looking at so far uh that's a confirmed kill the newish sensor that was installed was faulty and it was intermittently failing. Uh, as I mentioned, I witnessed it earlier and, and I apologize, I wish I'd have caught it on camera, but I did not. Um, but uh, we're, uh, we're looking good here. So let's revisit fuel trims one more time. You know, look at that, slightly hanging out in the negative. And short terms, they're switching just like they should be, bank one and bank two. All right, guys that's a confirmed kill we're good to go i'm gonna go ahead and shut this down uh i will drive this thing one more time in the morning and um and then we'll go ahead and ship it but i think we're good to go here if there's more on this i'll, I'll update you guys later on uh, so that being said i'm gonna go ahead and close this video out and as always i will do that by thanking each and every one of you for watching this video hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video you know the drill let me know about that by tapping that like button down below drop me a comment or two while you're down there and most importantly do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Rustang. I mean, I mean Mustang, Mustang. I, 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 I said I wouldn't call them Mustangs or Rustangs or junk stains, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I said I wouldn't make fun of them anymore, so I'm, just, I'm gonna give it a break. It's all in good fun, though. See you guys later. End of transmission. Oh, I forgot. Powering down. Okay.